Hi, and welcome back to another video of JPlay. Hi, Marcus, and first of all, I wish you all a happy new year. And my first walkthrough of 2015 is Royals by Peter Haas. If you know him from games like Hats of State, you're not completely wrong, as this is more or less a re-implementation. It's important to mention that Royals is not just a reprint. It's actually a major redesign of some elements of the original game and of course not to mention the slightly less cheesy artwork whereas I have to confess I'm a big fan of trashy stuff which led me to flying frog games in the first place. Of course Heads of State is not from FFP but the artwork reminded me of it a big deal. I will not bore you with all the difference between the original and Royals here but from time to time I might mention one or two things. In Royals, the players try to gain supremacy in parts of 17th century Europe by playing the right influence and or intrigue cards. And here is already a big difference, as in Heads of State are various different types of intrigue cards. In Royals, all those cards simply show two countries, which is way more streamlined for once, but of course also definitely easier in respect to when to play the right intrigue cards. Throughout the game you draw cards, place cubes and wait for scoring rounds in order to claim the various scoring tokens that apparently shows your actual supremacy at the end of the game. The more points, the more supreme you actually are, of course. It doesn't really matter with how many players you play, as the game scales pretty nicely by removing some cards on the country deck, basically. But for the sake of this walkthrough, I pretend a three-player game. It's only important to mention that in a two-player game, you have to play with a black and white player cubes, as there are more of those in the box. So let's say we play with grey, orange and purple, which I wouldn't choose voluntarily in a normal game situation, but the offer is not a deal in that respect. But Let's do it in the following order, from top to bottom, basically. I already prepared the various bonus markers for the cities, countries, noble houses and, of course, the markers for the three period scoring rounds. So, you see, it's all about scoring in this game, which is not so different from Heads of States, actually. I really like those Jigsaw title scoring markers in Royals, which can be shared with another players in case of a tie. So at the end of the game, when you have the most cubes of your color on this marshal here, for example, you take it as a whole. If you are tied with exactly one another player, you just break that in half and each player gets himself two victory points. I also prepared the country deck for the three player game and revealed three cards, but you always reveal three cards independent of the amount of players. The intrigue cards are simply shuffled and put into a face down deck. And now we are already good to go. Grey will be the starting player and the first thing you have to do during your very first turn is to draw country cards. And you do that according to the amount of players. So in a three player game, Grey will draw one country card, Orange will draw two and Purple will start the game with three cards. It's basically up to you if you choose face up cards or decide to draw your cards from the face down country deck, but you're not allowed to draw injury cards during your very first round. So let's do that for the grey player. I think grey will go for the Spain card here because in Spain there are two marshals who only require one card from Spain. So I think that's an easy way to gain some of those city bonus tokens here, that's, which is really important to this game. Note, drawing cards that or the drawing step of your face is always a mandatory step, but playing actual cards or claiming those positions is definitely optional. But that's easy brave for the Cray player, so he will play the Spain card here and he will claim the marshal position here down in Barcelona. For once, you place one of your cubes here to this position to show, okay, hey, this position is now claimed. Whereas your second stone goes on the title token here or the title double token here for some possible endgame scoring. And this was basically the optional player card phase. Now we come to the end of turn phase. Of course, this card will be discarded. And during the end of turn phase, you check for any possible bonus tiles you're about to claim. And luckily for the gray player, he was the first to claim a title in a city. And guess what? The token is still there, which means he's now allowed to claim this tile from Barcelona. 
You would also check for your hand size limit, which is 12 country cards and 4 in 3 cards. Of course, Gray only drew one card and he played one card, so there is no problem here. Which means we can directly move over to the orange player for his very first turn. Of course, I forgot to read your card and oh, that's not too bad. So we have still one Spain card and two cards from Britain. As there is still one marshal left, I think I will go for this Spain card here. And remember, the second player is allowed to draw two cards. And hmm, before a third card would show up, which could really mean to send someone to Edinburgh, I think we will go for the first Britain card here. And the orange player will play it pretty similar. He will play one card, he will claim the marshal down in Valencia and place one cube on the appropriate title card. End of turn for the orange player, we claim the city tile of Valencia. We check for any hand size issues, but with one card that shouldn't be a problem right now. So we just claim our city tile here and then we can move over to the purple player. As Purple wants to score at least one point as well, we go for this France card here and we will take one of those Great Britain card and I'm tempted to draw a card from the draw deck here. Let's do that now. And that's a card from Germany. As France can provide some serious points, I think we will start to build out our influence here in Bordeaux. And of course we will go for this Marshal here. So one goes on the position and as usual, one goes to the title card. We keep the other two cards. Of course we will be allowed to get it. the city bonus token, which is definitely not bad. And I think that's basically it for the purple player and then we would start the next round again with a gray player of course. For now I think we will continue drawing country cards. So we will go for Germany, that's for sure. We will take one from France and I think we will take one card from the face down deck and this is another card from Spain and this is definitely not bad for the gray player. So let's grab those cards and now we come into the play card phase which is optional as you might remember but we have another marshal up there in Berlin so I think let's play our Germany card to Berlin let's place one cube here on the marshal and one onto the title card so right now he's in the lead but I think this might as well change are there any marshals left let me check no i guess that we're all though i think he will definitely score those points for the marshal here awesome of course we will discard this card we will claim the city token gray has some good points already and still two cards left so i think he's not in a very bad position for the starting player that's definitely something very good Okay, let's move over to the orange player. Orange will definitely go for those two Great Britain cards, that's for sure. So let's do that. And he's also thinking of taking the last France card because France is really important because when you leave there you get some serious points. So let's go for the France cards and don't reveal any face down cards, but let's renew the offering here. Let's see, oh. Wow, that's a good, good catch for the purple player. But let's see what Orange will do first. Orange wants to take over Edinburgh. Yeah, so he plays the two cards he just drew, two Britain cards, and he still has one Britain card on his hand, which is enough to claim the Countess title here. So we place one marker here on the Countess and one on the appropriate title token. And of course, I was completely wrong about the lead of the gray player for the marshal. Though there are, of course, various ways to banish existing title holders. And then you would still be allowed to place your um, cubes on, on that title card here as well, of course. But for now, oops, claim the city tile for Edinburgh. And then we come to the purple player who already has a Britain and a German card. So let's see what we will draw now. Purple definitely wants to go for those two French cards because in Dijon we can definitely do something. Then we draw 
one card. Oh, that should be take. Now we take the Britain card here because this can give us an opportunity to send someone to Edinburgh at a later point in time. So we take those three cards. Let's reveal three new cards. Oops, this was face up. Not a problem. And we have another France card here. With a two France card, he just drew purple, will claim the Baron title here in Dijon. At least worth three points, so let's claim those three points. And the second stone goes to the Baron title card. And then we come back to the Grey player. And I think Grey will also go for those two German cards and this France card here. I think this can be definitely valuable. And Grey wants to claim the title in Cologne, that's also a Baron. So we place our Grey group here. We take the city scoring marker and place the stone accordingly. Orange will take the France card. I think he will take the Spain card and he will draw one card from the face down deck. Oh, guess what? It's also a Britain card, but that's not entirely bad. Let's reveal the next two cards. And in Avignon, he will claim the Baron. This is the only position that's available in Avignon. Not really a problem. So we take the city token and place the stone accordingly. Purple will go for the Germany card, for the Britain card, and he will take one card from the face down deck, which is also a France card. So let's reveal the next cards. Another Germany card and another Britain card. In Munich, a Countess is waiting for being claimed and Munich is worth five victory points, which is quite a lot. He just drew two of those cards or he has two Germany cards. One he drew and one he still had on hand. One thing that you can always do is to substitute one card with three other cards. So in this case, this would mean this counts as three German cards, for example, and this would allow the purple player to claim the Countess title here in Munich, to claim those five victory points, which is quite a lot. And he also claimed a Countess title. It's also important to occupy each of those titles at least once because of those Noble House bonus tokens. So the first player to occupy all titles, all available titles, will claim the 16 point token, then it's 12 point token and the third player can go with an 8 point token at least. Going back to the grey player, play will go for France and he will draw two cards from the face down deck. <laughs> Not to go for the open offering, but okay, cannot help it. We will reveal the next card, which is another Spain card, which is definitely good for the orange player. With his now three France cards, he will claim the Countess title here in Rennes. We place one there, we will place one on the title marker and we would be allowed to score those four points. Orange will go for the Spain card, he will take the Britain card and one face down card and this <laughs> one always the same. Okay, so we take those three cards, let's reveal the next set of cards. Okay, let's see what to make out of that. That's pretty easy for the orange player. He will play his two Spain cards and will claim the Baron title here in Salamanca. So let's place the token on the Baron and on the title card accordingly. Okay, Purple will take the German card. He will take the France card and he will take one card from the discard pile, which is also a France card. Come on, can you believe that? So let's see what we have next. And with his current cards, he is not able to claim any titles as of now. So we skip the play card phase. We more or less skip the end of turn phase because we are not claiming any scoring tokens. So we can directly jump over to the gray player. Gray will get one, two France cards and one card from the deck, which is also a German card. It's really unbelievable. Here we have Spain and another German card. And as he wants to stay in the lead in Germany, I guess Gray will play two of his cards. He will claim the Baron in Berlin 
as well. Unfortunately, there is no country uh, city scoring token left, so he's not allowed to claim. But of course, he's still allowed to place his cube on the title card, maybe to bring him some endgame scoring bonus points. This orange player already has one German card. I think he will go for those two German cards and he will draw one card from the deck. <laughs> That's what, again, it's the same card that's laying out. It's really unbelievable. Oh, what's what's happening here? Okay, sorry. They are not well shuffled. Let, let, me, let me reshuffle those. And although with those cards there's not much he can do, I think he will pass the action step basically and then we can move over to the purple player. Okie dokie, purple will take those two German cards, he will take one card, let me guess, it's a Spain card, no it's not, something completely different this turn, so let's see what comes out next, Britain and another Spain card, oh, that's possibly good for the grey player, let's see. Again, there is not much he can do. I think as of the next turn, we will start drawing in three cards for this fella here. But first of all, we have to start a new round with a gray player. Okay, I think gray will also start drawing in three cards. So we will draw one country card from the face down deck. This is a French card. Oh, this is not bad. And we will draw the in three card. And this is a French or Britain in three cards, so this can be pretty useful. In France the clay player can now go to a lead position. So for once we will play the in three card here for France. So this Baron here in Dijon will be banished. Then we play the two France cards in order to reclaim the Baron title here. So we do that accordingly and we play our cube on the Baron title as well. The reason why those guys are not removed from the board but they stay in the appropriate city is because you can score those country boring t uh, scoring tiles when you have one title in each of those cities or when you are present in each of those cities and those count to that. So for purple in order to score France possibly Dijon is already pre-claimed so he does not have to really bother about this anymore so he can focus on Paris for example as of his next turns. Orange will do something very similar for once he will draw one of those cards and he's again pretty lucky he draws this card and I think with a second card or with a country card he's allowed to draw he will take the Great Britain card so let's see what will be revealed another Germany card and with this treachery card for Germany again purple has to suffer unfortunately so this lovely lady will be banished we will place one of our orange cube of course we have to discard the according cards for that so here are three Germany cards and the orange player can place an additional token on the countess. Purple being quite pissed I think will also go for an intrigue card and he's lucky that's a French card and with his second card I think he will take the German card so it's really a new card this is Great Britain. He will play this intrigue card here in Ren so we will send the Countess of the Grey Blair into exile. We will place our purple cube by playing three of those France cards and place the cube accordingly. I'm only playing this this aggressively just in order to show that to you. Normally it's really important to start getting all those titles because those noble house tokens with 16, 12 and 8 points are really huge. So normally at least one or two of those players would play a little bit more, call it democratic way and would really gather more and more cards in order to claim titles like the princess or the king. But coming back to the grey player, he will take those two Spanish cards and I think he will go for this Great Britain card here as well. Let's see, he could also have drawn the face down card of course, always the same. Okay, in the next turn we really have a good choice. As we are coming closer to the period scoring, I think we will definitely want to claim 
the Countess here in Salamanca again. There is no city token left. But at least he also makes sure, as of now, no one would actually score the Countess bonus tile by the end of the game. Of course, this will definitely change. Okay, Orange will take the Britain card, which is very important for him. We take another card from the face down deck, and another card from the face down deck. Okay, that's definitely something different this time. Oh, we have two French cards for, well, possibly for the French player. Purple player, of course, but he's so present in France that we could even co also call him the French player. And this was perfect for the orange player as he can claim the Duke title here in Dublin with four Britain cards. So we take the city bonus token and are allowed to place the first cube on the Duke title card. Okay, I think purple will risk something. He will take the German card here and he will draw two cards from the face down deck. This is another France card and another German card. And I think this could really be enough to claim the princess title down in Vienna. Isn't that nice? So let's place our cube here. We claim the city bonus tile and place our first cube on the princess. Lovely. Grey desperately wants to go to Great Britain, but there are no cards here. So I think we take three cards from the face down deck. He's lucky once. Ah, he's only lucky once, fortunately. And with those cards, he's not able to claim any position, unfortunately. I think Orange will go for the Spain card. He will take one card from the face down deck and another card, and he has two Spain. Bane cards, which isn't that bad to be honest, because this can help to make him supreme here down in Spain. So we play four of those Spain cards and we claim the Duke title in Valencia. And a Duke can be ten, can be worth ten victory points by the end of the game. Of course, if he keeps that result, I think Purple will just draw three cards on the face down deck and hopes for something good, good mixture, but I think nothing really that will help him during this round. And yeah, with those cards, he's not really able to do anything meaningful. So we can move over to the gray player. Gray will draw one in three cards. Oh, he's not lucky. And I think he will go for one France card here as well. So let's reveal a new card. That's another card from German States. And I was wrong. This card was important because it allows him to claim this occupied position of the Countess. So Orange will be moved to exile. We will claim this title by playing three Great Britain cards. And so he's in the lead again for the title of the Countess. Orange will also draw a card, an entry card. This is France. This could be good. And let's take another France card. So let's reveal next card. So we've come to the end of the first round pretty soon. Then he plays this entry card. So gray will be banished. We place our orange cube there by playing two France cards. And now the title of the Baron is tied again. Purple will gamble again. He will draw one of those entry cards and I guess no, he's not lucky. And I think he will go for this card. This was the right card. Oh, he's really so unlucky. He takes those two cards. It's only one point different, but he will play it nevertheless. He will play his entry card here in Berlin and he will claim the title of the Baron. Yeah, that's his. He will reclaim the position by playing one Germany card and let's see, yeah, three other cards. They don't have to match or be in any relation to that, just three cards. So this allowed him to place his stone here. Of course, he's allowed to play his cube, but for now, this really doesn't matter. 
Going back to the gray player, he will take one in three card. He's also not really lucky and I think he will take one card from Spain. And now we don't have enough cards to refill the offering. So we would now reshuffle the country deck, give it really good shuffle to make sure there are in, yeah, because most of them are now in triplets or something like that. And then he would continue his turn, the gray player. And before we then would move over to the orange player, we would do the end of period scoring before it goes over to the next player. And again, I was wrong. He can do something with that because here in Spain, he can take over the majority. So he plays his intrigue card to move over this marshal to exile. He will play this Spain card to reclaim that marshal. But I was right when I mentioned this. It really seems he wants to lead the marshal position by the end of the game. And now we conduct the end of period scoring for 1648. And we do that country by country. So we will just check Great Britain first. And this is pretty easy. You just count your current titles in that country. In this case we have one Duke, we have one Countess. You normally take or sum up all of your points that are printed here. So we have a tie in this case. So both orange and gray player have a title that is worth one scoring point for the period scoring. But as orange has the higher ranking, higher ranking title Duke coming before the Countess, he's allowed to get the higher victory point token. And you see the difference in Great Britain is really huge. So this goes to the orange player and this goes to the gray player. Then we come to Spain. Let's count for orange. We have one point here, two points here. That's three points for orange. We have two points, three points, four points for the gray player. So in this case, it's reversed. Gray gets the seven victory points and orange gets the four victory points. In the German states we have all the players. So let's count for gray first. So we have one point here, two points, one point there. So it's two points for gray. Orange only has one point and purple has two and two that's four points. So in the German states purple gets six points, gray gets five points. And last but not least, France. And he, he was really lucky to do that right. So we have two points, three points for orange player, but only two points for the purple player. Gray has no actual influence right now. So orange gets 10 points, whereas purple unfortunately only gets four points. And I guess I can end my walk through here. I think I showed you most of the core mechanics and how to conduct an end game scoring or end of period scoring, sorry. And you do that basically three times and then you perform an end game scoring where you claim those nice title cards. Personally, I like the re-implementation of heads of state in the form of royals as some of the mechanics have been streamlined a big deal. But to be honest, I also like the original game with its skill tables, various treachery cards and the cheesy artwork. Abacus played it quite safe by hiring Michael Mansell, who has an impressive portfolio of course by providing artwork for games such as Legends of Andor, Bricka or Catan of course. If you ask me if I prefer Heads of State or Royals, I would not be able to answer you right away. But I guess I could bring Royals on the table more often because of the streamlined runes and the more middle-of-the-road artwork. But in general, I can only say that I totally love the game idea or the game mechanics of both and how cool and quick it can be to influence Europe in the 17th century. Though that's a definite recommendation. Hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough here and hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. Until then, bye bye.